Traders, this video is all about stochastic RSI and how to use it on TradingView and how to access it. Now, this indicator is rather popular because it is an indicator that is based off of RSI, and there are traders all over the planet who love the RSI indicator. Now, as a quick refresher on this chart, I've got this chart here of natural gas. I'm going to delete these two pattern charts here. So I've got this chart of natural gas futures. I'm on a daily chart. I've got RSI down here at the bottom and stochastic RSI down here at the top. These are two totally different indicators in the way they look and in their calculations. But the stochastic RSI, this is where this is key to understand, is not based on the price at all. So I'm looking at natural, natural gas futures. I've got stochastic RSI here. There is nothing in the price data here that is factored into stochastic RSI. So if you walk away with this video knowing one thing, it's this. Stochastic RSI is calculated entirely based off of the data that is in the RSI itself. So this RSI data is being fed into the stochastic RSI. So the stochastic RSI is essentially an indicator of an indicator. It is a sort of a second level indicator of sorts. So you cannot have stochastic RSI without having RSI itself. Now it's an indicator of an indicator because RSI, don't get too confused here, is an indicator based off of the price action. So I'm gonna go ahead and just delete stochastic RSI. And here's RSI. This indicator is entirely being calculated and presented to you based off of this information here on the chart, the actual price information. And if you haven't yet watched our video on RSI, a relative strength index, please go watch that video. It's on our YouTube channel. It's in our help center. That will give you the background and information you need about this indicator. But from a high level, the key calculation to RSI is to know that it is effectively a measurement of the average up days and their gains versus the average down days and their gains. And when one is outperforming the other, you can see the RSI trend in that direction. For example, if the up days are going faster and higher than the down days, you'll see RSI go up and to the right. If that the opposite is true, you'll see it go down. And then, of course, there are these oversold and overbought conditions, you know, based off of these dotted lines here at the top and bottom. Some people might say this is overbought. Some might say this is oversold, and you could sort of use that as a contrarian indicator. Others might say that's just simply momentum, and actually the higher it goes, the better on RSI. The lower it goes, the worse. It's up to you. You're definitely going to want to study the indicator, learn it, and figure out what works best for you. But this is the intro video to get you started, especially along the uh, journey of using stochastic RSI, which is an indicator on the indicator itself. RSI. So to, to get to stochastic RSI, click indicators, metrics, and strategies. We click stochastic RSI or type in STOC. We could type in stochastic. It's right here for us. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and click the tooltip here to open up the help center because looking at the calculation can now tie together everything we just stopped, uh, spoke about. Stochastic RSI equals RSI minus lowest low RSI divided by highest high RSI minus lowest low RSI. So everything in that calculation is based off of what the RSI is doing. It's right there in front of you. Now you know. And then, of course, there are some ways that you can read it. One, when RSI is at its highest level in 14 days. 0.8, when RSI near the high of its 14-day high-low range. And on you go. Now, these numbers, by the way, I'm just going to click stochastic RSI. I'm going to delete RSI, are shown to you right here on this specific visual of stochastic RSI. You've got these bands very similar to RSI to show you whether RSI is sort of, you know, it's, it's reaching highs or it's reaching lows relative to the time period that you have selected in the stochastic RSI settings. So you can see stochastic length 14. RSI length 14. These are by default. You will see 14 as the default length across many indicators. And by the way, remember the length here in this case, because I'm set to a daily chart and the time frame calculation is set to the chart. So daily, 
This is a way you could just think of as 14 days. So the RSI length over the last 14 days, stochastic length over the last 14 days. So this is the starting point to the RS stochastic RSI indicator. And if you can get to this point where you understand an indicator of this level of complexity, well, you're already off to a pretty good start. Now I'm going to go ahead and double click into the indicator settings because we're going to want to talk about K. We're going to want to talk about D. And we're also going to want to talk about the other indicator possibilities. So where should we start? How about we start here with the K indicator? So what does K mean exactly? The K value in the stochastic RSI represents the raw stochastic value of the RSI. It's measuring the relative position of the current RSI value within its recent high-low range over a specific number of periods. And you can think about those you know, specific periods depending on what you type into this K value in the settings menu. So by default, it is set to three. You can see here it says three. And in that case, and the indicator is going to be examining the past three RSI values to determine that relative position. Now, if we go to D below it, it's also by default at three. But also remember, you can change these numbers to anything that you wish. And the, the D here is sort of the smoothing element in the stochastic RSI. So it is calculated as the moving average of K over a specific number of periods. And this helps to, some might say, reduce the noise and provide a more clear signal of what's going on in this indicator. And this is also by default set to three. So we've got K is three, D is three, RSI length 14, stochastic length 14, RSI source is set to close, and our time frame calculation is based off of the chart. So now you've got the settings menu here right before you to dive in and really understand how it's being calculated. And if you want to, of course, go into those calculations even further, we can go to stochastic RSI, open up the help center again, scroll down, the K, the time period to be used in calculating the percentage K, three is the default. D, percentage D, percent of deviation between price and average of previous prices momentum. The time period to be used in calculated percentage D and three is the default. Now RSI, the RSI here, length is set to 14. Well, remember our stochastic RSI is an indicator of an indicator. And that indicator that it's an indicator of is RSI. So you need to tell the stochastic RSI what type of RSI length should they be using to even get this indicator rolling in the first place? By default, it's set for 14 as well. Now that we know the basics here of the settings menu, if we click style, we can totally customize this indicator as needed. So we've got K is the blue line, D is the orange line, upper band, middle band, lower band, and background. Now upper band, middle band, lower band, and background are pretty straightforward. Upper band here lower band here, middle band here, and all the shaded area is the background between the upper and lower bands. Now, remember we spoke about K here at three, D also at three. Well, K is the blue line and D is the orange line. And one way to look at these two lines is to look for divergences. When, are, when is K flipping D or when is D flipping K? And if you work in the world of indicators or you're familiar with them, these divergences can sometimes show you when momentum is turning, when a signal is potentially flashing or about to flash. It's going to come down to how you want to read and utilize this indicator for this specific example. But nevertheless, the point here is that you have these two lines that you can either hide one, not the other, hide one, not the other, or look at them both and make ideally a more informed decision based off of how this indicator of RSI is, is moving. So one great example of this is that if we go to RSI now and add it to the chart, what you'll see here is you have RSI and stochastic RSI, 
And you can use these indicators side by side, ideally using stochastic RSI as an indicator that is potentially confirming or invalidating RSI itself. So if you are a huge fan of RSI and you're looking for more data about RSI, you want to utilize RSI at a deeper level, you can use stochastic RSI to confirm or invalidate RSI itself. And if you have the price up, you have stochastic RSI up, and you have RSI up, you now have three layers of data to analyze the price action. You've got the price itself, then you've got RSI to measure momentum, and then you have stochastic RSI to measure the actual RSI indicator itself as now a third level indicator. So we hope that this video helps you get started with stochastic RSI, what it means, how to utilize it, its settings, and we appreciate you watching this video and please leave any questions or comments below. And we look forward to reading your feedback. We can add specific features that you request and more based off of your insights.